Hey everyone, welcome back to the Track Limits Podcast. We're here at Crater Club Studios. I'm joined by my co-host Mikey and a special guest, Claudia. We just finished watching the Hungarian Grand Prix. Guys, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Started the last 10 laps. Yeah, honestly, because yeah. the first, what, 60 laps? Nothing. I actually know. The first, like, 35 laps, nothing really happened after the first turn, but then chaos ensued. So where do we begin? Should we go McLaren first? Let's do McLaren. Yeah. Let's do McLaren. Right. Well, I mean, first of all, congrats to Oscar Piastri. Yeah, yeah no, well done. Huge. I got my prediction right. I made a pull bold prediction in Silverstone uh, race reflection and we finally got it Oscar has finally got his win now is this win tainted is the real question we had an earlier conversation while we were watching race yeah and I think you brought up a great fact yeah and I'll let I you mean, explain I think for sure because it just feels like if he got the position back you know 10 laps earlier it would have mm. felt like he earned it because he had the position mm -hmm. McLaren messed him up with the strategy but then at some point it just felt like it was gifted and the spirits were low I think the energy <laughs> yep. of the win was just not as high as it could be you could hear it in his team radio like after he crossed the finish line like mm. I, I don't think he would have been this you know chill, chill about we it, know I mean. he's a chill guy yeah, yeah. But it definitely wasn't as exciting as it could have been. For and sure. I definitely feel for him, for yeah. sure. Because yeah. first wins count. Every win counts, for sure. But I don't know. It's a bit of a sad double-edged sword one. 100%. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like, from a team perspective, great. One, two. Yeah. But how they managed that was horrendous. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't agree with the strategy. I feel like McLaren messed up in Silverstone. And now, again, they're like the Ferrari of strategy now. Yeah. yeah. The Ferrari passed the baton on, and yep. now McLaren and taking that. It, was, it wasn't even just Silverstone. This is a few races <laughs> few now. A few races, like, yeah. I think it probably started in Barcelona, all the way back from there. Yeah. And it just kept trailing. And I think they're adding so much pressure on themselves. Like, let's even talk about when they were asking the teams about Lewis Hamilton, trying to cover him when they were... Yeah, that was, was weird. Five didn't, seconds Didn't off. make sense. Didn't make sense. It was, like, not even relevant but, to their yeah. race. And the fact, like, you look at and compare it to other teams, we can talk about Red Bull, even Mercedes, where they have their strategy working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and they tell their drivers what the instructions are. Where with McLaren, we've seen this in race, race weeks. Every weekend, we are seeing them ask their drivers mm -hmm. what the strategy is what they want to be on which makes no sense i think that's where they're ruining it and and stella i think has to get a grip here he goes on on media and goes oh <laughs> we're still under control we're not worried about other teams we want to do our own strategy mm -hmm. and then goes on and then you see it in the races where they go on a slant about oh lewis we got to cover lewis we got to cover max and they can't even put their p1 and p2 in order they were yeah. even asking lando about like a safety car on lap like 50 <laughs> yeah. something right like the one thing i'll say about mclaren is like even even their engineer today yeah. and this is this was so good it was like five laps to go the way to win a championship is with the team you're going to need oscar you're going to need a team that's basically threatening lando yeah. do what we're telling you but lando was in a tricky spot he was pulling so much time on oscar like it was five seconds close to six before that, I was like, oh, Lando's got to give it back. That's bad for him personally. Yeah. But after a six-second gap, actually, no, you deserve that. You pulled that lead. So yeah. it was such a fine line. Now, Lando in the end gave it up, but still, like, to, for your engineer to basically threaten him, being like, it's a team sport, give it back to La Oscar, was a little bit like... Yeah, I, I really wanted Lando to go into his, like, villain era right yeah. there in this moment. Yeah. Because, yes, they screwed up the whole uh, last stint of, uh, with Oscar, but at the same time, it's like, like you just said, he was outpacing him mm -hmm. completely. Yes, they were both overusing their tires, trying to over. Well, that's what the engineers are saying. Yeah. For all we know, when that was just a scare tactic. Know. like, hey, <laughs> we got to scare Lando somehow. Exactly. But like on merit, Lando still won it. Yes, Oscar in the beginning, first two t uh, stints, he mm -hmm. had it all in control and he was maintaining pace. But Lando came alive in that last stint. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I, if I was Lando, I would have had two choices. I would have crossed the line and won this race because of merit and entered and uh, become the villain. Mm -hmm. Or like I, I was saying, I would have parked it right before the line yeah, yeah, yeah. and let Oscar pass. And I would have passed just well, to be like, eat it. McLaren. On merit is still controversial though, because yeah. like he might've earned it on merit in those last like 15 laps, True. but then I don't know. I just don't before think he would have been happy with that. Yeah. What do you guys think though? I think he gets a lot of criticism for, not having a champion mentality per se mm. of like being the villain putting yourself first yeah. taking risky max like decisions yeah. 
But like, is that the right thing to do? Does he need to do that? I think so. Like, like you were looking at the points for the drivers. Yeah. Like, this matters more to Lando in terms of points. I know it's a first win for Oscar. It's a huge moment. Yeah. But in terms of points, Oscar is what, P5? Oscar is currently P5. So this has just been updated. So Max is 265. Lando is 189. So it's very close. Yeah. And then Oscar is 149. Yeah. Maybe this hasn't updated. But even if it wasn't, then like, I guess Lando would have been 196. But again, if he got the win. There's still there's still a lot of races to go, yeah. and yeah. Oscar has been right beside Lando, so you can't disregard Oscar in that fact either. Yeah. So you, it's so tough. It's yeah. so tough. It should have never come down to it. They should exactly. have never been so worried about Lewis that they tried to pit Piastri and then had this whole cluster. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, th- we can rant about McLaren all day long, but let's move it to another person who's, I think we're seeing a reverse side of him, the immaturity coming back. Max Verstappen. Uh-huh. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a tough one. As a Red Bull fan, I, I'm a bit disappointed with his actions today. Not just in the car, but just the way he handled the situation within the car and within his own team. And that was, the radio calls were very, very. Uh, Are you surprised though? I am because we. I really thought we have overcome this. It's been three years of him he's gotten that first championship i understood mm-hmm. why he was like that because it meant a lot just like it meant a lot to oscar winning his first win it meant a lot in 2021 so mm-hmm. we saw that but now it's like you're you're calm and collected you've won multiple championships we expect you to be mature enough to either provide better feedback for the team instead of screaming at jp yes we understand yeah. their relationship but there's it comes to a point where it's like you you need to show that maturity both off track and on track. It's a double-edged sword. Like we know Max and you kind of grow to appreciate Max yeah. for his, uh, his just explosiveness. One, mm. in his driving performance and two, in the way he expresses himself. <laughs> um, we thought we had a mature Max this year. Yep. I think today was a clear example. Like if you rattle his cage enough, he will explode. Yeah. Yeah. His driving got erratic. He started making, I want to say silly moves. Like, Maybe he shouldn't have went so late on Lewis, locked yeah. up his brakes. It was a race an instant. Lewis, Lewis turned in. Max had very well to, to hold it together. Yeah. He was probably frustrated. He was on a, the medium compound tires against a hard tire. He had more pace. He had more pace for multiple laps. But that track was so tough to get around, so he maybe forced a move. The previous few laps, he tried to take Lewis around the outside. You could clearly see he was turning dirty side of the track. He was just getting a little bit more agitated. Yeah. Um, I think Red Bull is struggling right now a little bit. Like that car yeah. is struggling. It's just tad. been a hard weekend, like yeah. for yes. the last few weeks, yeah. even. So I'm not surprised. Credit to Perez, though. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. What, what P7. Did he Where did he P7 start? From, P7. Was it 16? Yeah. Wow. He gained yeah. like yeah. many yeah. positions. The cameras never went to him uh, once. Not yes. once. Not once. Uh, can we also talk about how they didn't show his pit? Every time he was <laughs> yeah, into the pit, like, we would. We have no yeah. idea how long the pit stops were. But I uh, guess I, I, I am, I can agree and say that Red Bull is struggling. There's, mm-hmm. I mean, we're seeing it. McLaren is the top dog now. It's confirmed. Yeah. There's a few races in. The only, uh, it, it would have been multiple wins for McLaren if they didn't screw up strategy in the previous races. And how somehow Red Bull or Max, I should say, not Checo, Max will <laughs> somehow get his hands in there and get in a podium. Yeah, even now, if he didn't crash with uh, Lewis, most likely he would have finished in P3 today. Yeah, because he had the pace to pass, to pass Lewis, yeah. and then Leclerc got lucky after that little yeah. incident. Um, but I think Perez actually did a bit of recovery today because there was a lot of media around him. There has been, but even yeah. Horner was like, we can't run a race in one leg. Yeah. Pause, Basically pause. Min- We're entering the Checo moment. Yeah. Checo segment segment. Of this, this is episode. depreciation <laughs> moment now. Um, but he has to back that up. Like in Spa, he can't go from 16 to 7, get points, yeah, and then yeah. in Spa, God forbid, has another incident. It's gone. Like it's game over. Because yeah. we can already see now Max needs that teammate. Like Lando has Piastri, Leclerc mm-hmm. has signs. Like Mercedes have been good back and forth together for the whole season it's been max and we have to look way down the grid to see where checo is yeah. so he needs to bring a little bit more because even in constructors mclaren are right there now they're mm-hmm. knocking oh, yeah. on red bull's right door yeah so i think constructors red bull are going to struggle unless there's drastic changes it'll be mclaren's drivers again it depends on the day like next weekend spa maybe max is a lot, little bit better than the mclaren or maybe mclaren's strategy will give it to max yeah uh, it's, but you, it's exciting though yeah i was gonna say do you think checo gets it past the summer break i don't know it's just like p7's not enough yeah you know mm. 
if you're driving for Red Bull P7, it's nowhere near enough. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I, I personally don't think he will. It's a tough one. Even if he does well in Spa, I really think they're so much under pressure that they mm -hmm. will have to make that move. But again, who would take his place? But it's hard because like they were in the same position last year. Like this exact time last year, yeah. things were going the same way. Yep. And like they've just re-signed him again. So it's yeah. like, I don't know if they're scared to be in a position where we're going to bring in somebody that's as competitive as Max and really stir the pot. Or if they're willing to take that risk. That's true. And they have PTSD from <laughs> two previous drivers mm. of Gasly and uh, Albon. Albon. So I think they also are scared to bring someone in young. Like Lawson did a test in Silverson. Mm. They said it was competitive time. They weren't like over half, like excited about it. But it's a hard one. And then you have Yuki and Ricardo. Yes, Ricardo is a more experienced driver. Yeah. He hasn't really showed it since he's been back in the RB family. Then Yuki, he's been consistent, but he still has those times where he may make those mistakes. You got to give it to Yuki. So uh, consistent. Yeah. Another yeah. point to finish. Like. Exactly. You got to give it to Yuki. I'm sorry. If yeah. anyone's getting that upgrade, it should be Yuki. Yeah. And let him see if he can handle the pressure. And if he doesn't, he yeah. had his opportunity. Yeah. You, you dishearten that man so much if, if you let, <laughs> let Ricardo in. Like, he would be so disheartened. Oh, yeah. And what are you going to say to him? Oh, just hang in there. Yeah. Till when? Like, no, no, no. Funny enough, he did get asked during the beginning of the oh, week. Yeah. They were like, oh, Lawson is in the talks of replacing Checo. And he's like, Lawson? Well, yeah. It's just straight into yeah. the senior team. So they're like, what? that would be weird. He's like, I don't think they'll do that, but that would be weird. Like, of course that Because it be would weird. be weird. Yeah. Like, it's so weird. But I, I also kind of see it, though. It's like, do you want someone that's fresh who has shown last year in a few races mm -hmm. that he can put it? put a fight to Yuki at, in the same car last year, mm -hmm. and you bring him in with a car that is competitive, but not the best car, and get adjusted in this last 10 races so that next year he's up in there where Yuki is right now currently driving a completely different car. Mm -hmm. He's gotten used to this car and it might struggle when he gets into that Red Bull halfway through the season. But I think Yuki struggling in a Red Bull would be a lot less drastic than and Lawson. Lawson coming in and trying to get together a whole new car. Yeah. Yeah. Red Bull need to scrape through this championship. Yeah. If they swap a driver out now, I like as much as Perez has been performing, it's better they put nearly all their eggs in his basket and be mm -hmm. like, okay, let's do this. Like, yeah. what do you need from the team? Let's support, let's do yeah. whatever. Then bring in a completely new rookie because you have to let him mature. He's going to take all season to mature. Is he considered a rookie though? Yes. He's been out of that seat for so long. <laughs> You're That's talking about true. Yuki or Lawson? Oh, Lawson, Lawson. Yeah, when's the last time he had a seat? When is the last time he raced? Uh, last That's true. He's been last, out for a while. Yeah. That's, That's true. That's, That's, true. That's too long. Yeah. Two weekends out and you're considered rusty. Like. <laughs> yeah. That's no, very no, true. no, no. I'm sorry. No, yeah. I don't agree with that. Okay, okay. What about the Alpines, though? Back-to-back <laughs> -back races. <laughs> Oof. We thought they were building some kind of car that's going to be competitive. We saw back-to-back mm -hmm. -back races during that triple header where they got points. And then suddenly Silverstone and now complete no shows what happened it's like non-stop problems it's yeah. like yeah. mechanical issues like teammate issues yeah. like internal issues yeah. like i think they got rid of a few staff members like mm. it's just been a disaster for them i don't know man i'm so disappointed they haven't got points yeah like you gotta think they just need to can it for this season put all their eggs into next season basketball what do you tell your sponsors they did a massive like they got a massive, massive big overhaul. big high-end clients now like yeah. sponsors so it's weird like ghastly has been had so unfortunate look like Retired again today. I don't even yeah. know what happened. But yeah, no. I mean, at least he started the race. <laughs> Barely. To I think he limped <laughs> he out of the pits and then limped back <laughs> in again. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. But other than that, we have the Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton mm -hmm. back on the podium. George Russell with the fastest lap. And he was competitive. Yeah. Same yeah. as Treco. They put he, it up He the got grid. eight. Eight in the fastest yeah. lap. It's good. Lewis on the podium again. Lewis did well. I didn't expect that. He had that an podium. underrated race. Like Yeah. Quiet race. You know, bulldoze into Max. Side topic. Yeah, defensive. Uh, I would consider that <laughs> bulldozing. <laughs> That's what we call a fender bender. Like. <laughs> Other than that, um, I'm 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 impressed. You were talking about their upgrades. I didn't even know notice that little fender. I read somewhere that um and Mercedes car recently now on the front just farther up from the front wing, yeah. there's a bulge and it's where the main mm. suspension comes in. And seemingly they've done something with the suspension, they've tweaked it. That was last weekend, it was just a little bulge. This weekend, they've added a little air vent. In practice, George had his opened, Lewis had his closed. Yeah. And from there, I think the car has been just handled a little bit better. So I think they've brought small tweaks, and it's clearly working. Like Red Bull, Max brought in all new side pots. 
Checo brought in new upgrades no. as well, but I think he left them in the barrier yeah. on practice. <laughs> um, but teams are making tweaks. You look at Aston yeah. Martin, they're making tweaks. Just bad ones. But we don't know if they're standstill or they're going backwards. Every other team seems to be going forward. Forward, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think this is the, probably the most exciting part of the race season yeah. because it's not a given anymore. Even though we're seeing McLaren's up there, they're still making little strategy mistakes, which will let your Lewis Hamilton, your Max come true. So yeah. it's probably the most exciting right yeah. now. And also Ferrari. I mean, they've had mm. a few mm. scratching mm. weekends. Good recovery to this yeah. weekend. Though. Exactly. And I really think they said they've found the issue with their purposing and why they're bouncing on the straight line. So... If they fix that, I really think they can be competitive again. I don't yeah. see why, especially the next few races that are coming up. A lot of straights, a lot of high-speed mm -hmm. corners. I don't see why they wouldn't be competitive. Charles has bad luck in the past, <laughs> past few races. Yeah, four races he's yeah. been like. Since Monaco, he's yeah. been nowhere. At least today he yeah. was. He At was least getting... he got Monaco. I mean, <laughs> yeah. everything else has been. I, I love reading the memes because they were like, oh, they built this car just for Monaco and then it's yeah. a scrap from that. Sure they did. Yeah, they spent <laughs> millions for, for one race. For sure, sure they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, next weekend we got Spa coming mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. It is a very different track from what we experienced today. A lot of straights, a lot of windy corners. Do we expect another one to McLaren? Do we anticipate Max having another revenge race or more of an angry race and mm -hmm. cause more havoc? What are we, we and Ferraris? What about them too? I mean, they've got a week to figure this out. Yeah. Like it's clear that Red Bull has some issues mm -hmm. with the car. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to be, you know, top step yeah. next week. But what would McLaren's, McLaren's there? I, th I think they just need to focus on, you know, reharmonizing the team <laughs> a little bit, yeah. even though after the race, it seemed like everything was fine. Mm -hmm. We don't know yeah. like what happens behind the scenes, but it seems like they just need to get it together a little yeah, bit. I agree. I think there's one thing we need to add to this is like in Silverstone, best race ever. We had yeah. a little sprinkle of rain. The qualifying of this red, we had a little bit of sprinkle of rain. If Spa can have a nice rain qualifying session, oh, yeah. maybe a little dash yeah. for the race, be class. They actually made it last year. It made it interesting because McLaren's, they did, had their upgrades already. They were yeah. becoming competitive, but they took the gamble and set up the car for rain because they anticipated that rain was coming on Sunday, but it didn't, which cost them because they were getting ripped on the straights. They were fantastic in sector two, all the windy the stuff, speed and get killed in sector three again. So I would love to see rain because, again, teams will make gambling choices mm. with their setups and we'll see an entertaining race like last year. I really yeah. hope yeah. some that good we can strategy calls. Yes, because we know it's a, the longest track of of the calendar. It it can be boring when mm -hmm. they are stuck in DRS train or everyone's on the same maintaining pace or their tire degradation. It gets boring, mm -hmm. and even we came into this race saying, "Oh, it's gonna be a boring race after the first turn. Nothing will happen," and we got some good racing near the end. Yeah, it was near the end. It was good. Yeah, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be another great week. Uh, right before summer break so yeah. it should be interesting uh we we're hearing rumbles that there's gonna be a lot of driver market changing during Hopefully. the summer break yeah. so it's to about like, time just, just bring, so many open seats. <laughs> yeah. bring it on um anything else you guys want to add before we wrap this up we're good yeah. bring on spa let's Boom. do it, let's do it. thank you so much for tuning in everyone please make sure to like subscribe and do all the above and we'll catch you on the next one